Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Church on Sunday the 20th of December. We're just a few days away now from Christmas and so this is the fourth Sunday of Advent and in a few moments we will light our fourth candle. But before we do that, let's pray. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That's it, well done Jess. Today we light the candle of peace. Peace is like light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of the candle, we give thanks for the peace that we have in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Prince of Peace and only through him can we experience true peace, the total peace that is found when we are reconciled with God. And we remember Mary who responded to your call to be the mother of Jesus and experience the true peace found in your will for our lives. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, we pray peace for ourselves and for the world. We pray for everyone who lives in the midst of conflict or war. We are called to be people of peace and reconciliation. Help us, who you have called to be your disciples, to recognise your voice. Trust you and, like Mary, to willingly respond yes to your will for us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Saviour and the Prince of Peace. And let us say it together. Lord Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, reign in our hearts and in all the world. Come close to us this Advent. Amen. faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectation, waiting here for you.
Today's reading is taken from Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to the man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. I love this reading from the Gospel of Luke, where we hear about the moment that a young woman's life changed beyond her wildest dreams. And we begin to see and are challenged by the kingdom of God. In this reading, we see a glimpse of God's kingdom, not through miracles or healings, as we see in Jesus's ministry, but in God's choice of the woman who would carry and care for the Messiah. Time and time again, the kingdom of God turns everything upside down. The last will be first and the first will be last. Isaiah 55 says, God's ways are not our ways, nor his thoughts our thoughts. And we see the truth of this when we consider the people that God calls to serve him in specific ways throughout scripture. From David, the youngest, and therefore the least considered in human values, to Saul, the persecutor of the Christians. God's choice of those he calls to serve him so often challenge our human judgments. And in this passage, we see that God didn't choose somebody important or wealthy. God didn't even choose someone who society might have placed any faith in. Instead, God chose Mary, a young, probably teenage girl, living in a place of no significance, the most unlikely person to carry all that responsibility. And notice Mary's response to Gabriel. It says she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Every time I hear this reading, I'm captured by the word ponder. It kind of gives a, a simple obedience. It gives the impression of that simple obedience. And we can't help, can we, but be challenged by her faith and trust in God. But the word ponder tells us more than we might initially think. The theologian Paula Gooder suggests that the English biblical translation that we use doesn't give a full picture of Mary's response. When we think about pondering something, it brings to mind mulling something over. If you invited me round for a drink and offered tea or coffee, I might ponder which I would prefer. I might think it through for a few seconds before I answered. 
I might even ponder for a little longer decisions about what Christmas gifts I, I'm going to buy somebody. Or I'm sure at the moment we're all pondering who we should or shouldn't see over the Christmas period. Wanting to make the right decision, spending a little time thinking it through. But the Greek word has a greater emphasis on a feeling of agitation. There's a sense that she would have argued within herself about what was being said. She was taken aback. She was disturbed, anxious, troubled by the angel's words. I'd love to know what she was thinking. And of course, we'll never know that. But her response would indicate that she maybe questioned her own ability. Could she respond to this call? Was she good enough? Could she fulfil this task? And of all people, why her? And so Gabriel responds, do not be afraid. You see, the kingdom of God, all things are possible. The impossible is made possible. The virgin girl offers herself and God uses her to carry the saviour of the world. The boy with five loaves and two fishes offers his lunch and thousands are fed. Those with little faith trust what faith they have, the mustard seed of faith, the tiny amount of faith. And those disciples walked on water. The baby boy born among animals is the saviour of the world. And it's the same with us. No matter what we think of our offering to God, however meagre we might think that is, Time and time again, scripture shows us that when we say, here I am Lord, God uses what we give to build his kingdom on earth. Every single one of us is called, called as baptised believers to join God's mission in his world. The true iron God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has invited each one of us into a relationship with him, a relationship of love and hope. We are called to help others see that they too are invited into this relationship. This is God's mission in the world to make disciples of all nations to the ends of the earth. And we the church are called to join him in his mission in our town, in our community, here in Weymouth. We too may be, we may ponder this calling. We may find it deserving. It may cause us anxiety. Not me, I'm not good enough we may say to ourselves, but he calls you. And we see from scripture that in God's kingdom, even the most unlikely people are called. And that includes you and me. As we look at Mary's calling, what seems deeply significant is that she understands that being favoured by God is as much to be feared as embraced. It's truly wonderful to be beloved by God, but this comes with challenges beyond our imagination. And it seems to me that Mary has it the right way round. The message that God has chosen her is actually the scary bit. She's humbled. She's perplexed. Why me? She knows she can't do this alone. But nothing is impossible with God. 
and the news that Elizabeth has conceived a son at her age confirms to Mary that this is God. And when we stand and walk in obedience with God, nothing is impossible. And so she responds, here I am, Lord. This evening, our Christmas celebrations begin and we celebrate the uniting of heaven and earth through Jesus as we sing carols together. But the world will soon forget Christmas. It will be packed away again in the loft. But when the world forgets Christmas, God has not forget forgotten the world. He continues to use the most unlikely of people, people like you and me, to bring in and to show the signs of God's coming kingdom. So today, ponder, wrestle, be disturbed, but know that you are called called by God to be part of his mission in the world. Mary responded with the words, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Today, how will you respond? Let's pray. Father God, we come before you now and we thank you that you call each one of us. We thank you that even when we do not think we are worthy, we do not think we are good enough, that with you nothing is impossible. And today, wherever we are, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come now, that you will draw close to each one of us, that you equip us with the things that we need, the strength that we need to follow you. Come Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Don't forget to join us this evening at 6.30 for our Carols by Candlelight at Home here on YouTube. And make sure you've got a candle ready for the start of the service. Also on Christmas Eve, we are celebrating and having a Christingle at Home service. If you haven't ordered yourself a pack yet, you're not too late, sign up for a pack and we'll make sure that they are delivered to you at home so you can join in. And then on Christmas morning, there will be a service both in the church building and also here online. We finish now and we receive God's blessing. May God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe and blameless in spirit soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>